In fifth place, we have the threats of pestilence. To quote directly from Matthews 24, and there shall be pestilences. I think I speak for all of us on Earth when I wonder if we've already started to go through with that promise. The last three years have been so greatly affected by plague and illness, and I'm not quite sure we will ever have a definite end, which was almost scary enough to put this higher up on my list. Thankfully, with being able to protect so many against the current illness and reopening the world, this isn't the great illness we need to fear. Biblical judgments through disease are said to be supernatural in origin. For example, when God sent boils to Egypt, they broke out instantly on humans and animals throughout the land. The pestilence of Revelation will come from one of the four horsemen of the apocalypse. Everything the world has gone through in the last few years was natural, not supernatural. God did not cause this virus or the panini it created. Secondly, biblical judgments are against specific sins and sinners. From Pharaoh's obstinacy to Herod's prideful idolatry, divine judgments of the past and future come to those who refuse his word and will. Throughout scripture and history, God deals with us as gently as he can or as harshly as he must. It has been preached that no specific sins cause this virus, nor are those who are afflicted with it more sinful than the rest of us. God is, quote, said to love the elderly and those with pre-existing conditions just as much as he loves the young and the healthy. I worry what could happen in the future that could be worse. Mentally, you do not want to see me cooped up again for another year. And as much as I love a good sleepy hollow marathon, I don't need to see a horseman of the apocalypse in person. In fourth place, we have the promises of hate. Once again from the book of Matthews, many will be offended and betray each other. Similar to my last point, I worry this prediction may already be beginning to show in today's society. With the news that comes across my feet every day, I worry for the world as we know it. According to the Bible, where there is conflict, there is the potential for hate, which leads to discord, disharmony, malice, and anger. Hate is a motivator for wicked behavior, and the Bible helps identify hate by showing how indulging in it leads to certain outcomes. Hate is not just an emotion, but a state of being that involves choices, behaviors, and thoughts. It separates people rather than bringing them together, because the one hating sets themselves away from another. Hate is intimately tied in with death, and it is said that someone harboring hate is killing their brother in their heart. When this hate is acted upon, it leads to death. Sometimes that is spiritual or relational, but unfortunately it can also be the ending of the life of another. Hate is dangerous because when taken to its logical conclusion, it is the desire to eliminate the humanity of another. I'd like to hope that we as a society can heal from the hatred in our hearts, avoiding this prediction from coming true. In third place, we have the prediction of crazy earthquakes. Quoting again from, take a wild guess here. Did you guess the book of Matthews? You're brilliant. <laughs> The Bible mentions earthquakes in a prophecy that Jesus gave, his words being recorded as follows. Nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom, and there will be food shortages and earthquakes in one place after another. Jesus thus foretold that great earthquakes would occur in one place after another at a time when wars, food shortages, and pestilences would also be taking place. Together, these events identify a period in human history known as the conclusion of the system of things, or the last days. Kind of like a puzzle coming together, the three predictions I've listed so far tend to all come hand in hand. The National Earthquake Information Center now locates about 20,000 earthquakes around the globe each year, or approximately 55 per day. As a result of the improvements in communications and the increased interest in natural disasters, the public now learns about earthquakes more quickly than ever before. According to long-term records that date back to 1900, we expect about 16 major earthquakes in any given year. That includes 15 earthquakes in the magnitude 7 range and one earthquake of a magnitude, say, 8.0 or greater. In the past 40 to 50 years, our records show that we have exceeded the long-term average number of major earthquakes about a dozen times. So far, the year with the largest total was 2010, with 23 major earthquakes, the definition of which being 7.0 in magnitude or greater. In other years, the total was well below the annual long-term average of 16 major earthquakes. For example, 1988 had only seven major earthquakes and 1989 having six. Knowing how much devastation a minor earthquake can cause though, never mind a large one, I'd like to not witness this prediction come to fruition. Thanks. In second place, we have the second coming of Christ, otherwise known as the rapture. Many different religions have predicted this ever since it was said that Jesus ascended to heaven thousands of years ago. The Catholic Church believes at the moment of Jesus' arrival, three events will happen immediately. The living will pass, the universe will be transfigured, and the dead will be resurrected, judged, and recompensed. After this single instant or moment, the church does not know what will happen for the rest of eternity. Only that final and eternal judgment by God of the people in every nation will result in the glorification of some and 
and the punishment of others. Personally, this sounds like a nightmare. A single source of instantaneous judgment deciding everyone's fate? Only a single god knowing what day and when this is going to happen? Yeah, once again, hard pass. Also, while the return of a savior may sound good in theory, I'd like to bring up another view on it. How many of y'all enjoy a zombie movie? Yeah, me too. Now, remind me, how do those start? With someone returning from the dead. I'm sure you catch my drift here. Adding on to the plague spot from earlier, just imagine what someone who passed away 2,000 years ago could bring back with them. We also have no clue if other spirits could return with Jesus. As history has shown, troublesome spirits and demonic powers have ways of getting what they want by attaching themselves to innocent beings, or posing as such to trick us. Once again, as much as I love discussing demonic powers that have made their way to Earth, I highly disapprove of anything that could attract them here. I'm begging you here. For the love of all things in the world, leave the gosh dang Ouija board on the shelf at the store. Please. <laughs> Finally, we have my personal favorite, the Antichrist. Remember a minute ago when I talked about things that could take Jesus' place by posing as him? Yeah, time to elaborate on that front. The technical definition of the Antichrist refers to people prophesied by the Bible to oppose Jesus and substitute themselves in Christ's place before the Second Coming. The term Antichrist is found four times in the New Testament, solely in the First and Second Apostle of John. The Antichrist is announced as the one who denies the Father and Son. Now look, I don't really believe in a singular male god myself, which I'm sure total shock at all of y'all, but I don't think that that alone would make me or anyone else with similar beliefs the Antichrist. So I'll elaborate more if you don't click off right now. Yes, pay attention. <laughs> the Antichrist would be the polar opposite and ultimate enemy of Christ. According to Christian tradition, he will reign terribly in the period prior to the Last Judgment. The Last Judgment being the day that Jesus returns to either save or, you know, condemn us, depending on where you fall under his and God's mortal compass. The term Antichrist first appeared in the letters of John. I know, not Matthew's for once. And the fully developed story of the Antichrist's life and reign is found in medieval texts. The revelation to John refers to this figure as the beast from the abyss and the beast from the sea. In the most sustained account of his appearance, he is called the man of sin and son of perdition. He will come at a time of a general apostasy, lack of faith, deceive people with signs and wonders, sit in the temple of God and claim to be God himself. Finally, he will be defeated by Jesus, who will destroy him by the spirit of his mouth and the brightness of his coming. I guess I'll make a note to keep a pair of sunglasses in my purse from here on out. In terms of direct comparison, with Jesus being born of a virgin by means of immaculate conception by the Holy Spirit, the Antichrist will be born of a lady of the night by means of conception by a diabolical spirit. Although opinions differed as to whether the Antichrist's father will be a man or demon, in either case the Antichrist will be, as commonly noted in the Middle Ages, full of the devil from the time of his conception. He will be born of the tribe of Dan, known as the Viper in the Road rather than the tribe of Judah, and in Babylon, not Bethlehem. Like Christ, the Antichrist will grow up in obscurity and begin his open ministry when he reaches the age of 30, gaining followers by giving signs and performing miracles. The signs and miracles once more would be polar opposites of Christ, because, well, the Antichrist's supposed miracles will only be tricks, with his triumphant reign lasting for around three and a half years. Like Christ, the Antichrist will make his way to Jerusalem, but unlike Jesus, he will be enthusiastically hailed and revered. During his reign, he will rebuild the temple and sit on the throne of Solomon while he converts the rulers of the earth to his cause. All who resist him will be tortured, and there will be great suffering to an extreme that has not been experienced since the beginning of time. The prophets Enoch and Elijah, who never died but were spirited away to heaven, will arrive to preach against the tyrant, but the Antichrist will slay them. At the end of this allotted three and a half years, however, the Antichrist Christ will be destroyed by the power of Christ, and after a short amount of time will come the last judgment and the end of the world. Not to sound like a broken record, but uh, once again, yikes. I'd rather not have that battle or have this world end. Sure, it's not perfect by any means, and while I could stand here for about an hour and list off a long list of things I'd really love to see improve, I don't want to face an all-out battle. Number five, war. What is it good for? Seven months the great war, people dead of evil doing. Ruin Evra shall not fall to the king. Now, if you've watched any of our previous videos on Nostradamus and other end of the world prediction style videos, you know that Nostradamus and the other seers tended to keep their predictions pretty vague, but sometimes they spelled it out simple enough that even a simpleton like me could follow along. Nostradamus is predicting a big war, a great war even, in size, not in quality. I don't think there was ever a great war. If the quatrain is anything to go off of, Nostradamus predicts that the war will erupt across Europe 
and then ravage the countryside while hopefully keeping the city of Rouen, France in a good spot and will refuse to fall to the king. Now that part is open to a little bit of interpretation because really that could mean anything. Who could the king be referring to? Is it one particular world leader? One nation vying for power? Is it the Burger King mascot who's finally snapped and is on a war path of world domination? He's easily the most unhinged and dangerous of all fast food mascots and the one I would most expect to start a war. Now, this is obviously a delicate subject, but the current situations across Eastern Europe is already cause for enough alarm. A war that's got everybody on their toes and watching the news constantly. And I don't think anyone wants to see it develop further into a proverbial great war. A seven month great war sounds like it'd be over in a flash, but I think the last thing anyone wants is a war that's over in a flash knowing the nuclear powered arsenals out there. Shorter war is not necessarily a good thing. Nuclear annihilation is kind of the, the, the last thing anybody needs out there. Hey, hope I'm not bumming you out too much. Talking about global conflicts and possibly the end of the world, let's talk about something fun, like our fun channel. We got all sorts of scary content of just about any topic you can think of. So click through, stay scared, but stay watching this video, because we got a whole lot more predictions left to go. Number four, Mars and Elon Musk. Listen to this quatrain. The two contenders will unite together. When most others unite with Mars, the African leader is fearful and trembles. The dual alliance is separated by the fleet. Uh, this one seems too perfect, you know? Immediately as I read that quatrain, maybe you made the same connection too. Mars, African leader? Immediately coming to my mind is Elon Musk, the South African billionaire tycoon who currently owns Twitter and has been extremely outspoken about his desire to flee this planet and to become the king and colonize the red planet of Mars. But who are these two contenders that have to unite together? Could it be referring to global superpowers coming together for the future of humanity? Or is it Facebook and Twitter coming together and he's just looking to buy more social medias? Some professional followers of Nostradamus's work, such as Lori Reading, has argued in favor of this as well arguing that this is referring to the billionaire's plans for galactic domination. Another quatrain seems almost connected with this line from another verse. Take a listen. The light of Mars shall go out. Could this be again a reference to the mission? A suggestion that perhaps this dream of Mars is just that. A foolish dream. And that a colony on Mars would fail in upon itself. It also links up bizarrely well with the Opportunity Rover. If you remember that from a few years back, the little guy who was rolling around the surface of Mars. Its last transmission was, my battery is fading and I'm going dark, which is almost like directly saying a light of Mars is going out. Hey, this is actually starting to creep me out here. Nostradamus might have been magic just a little bit. Time will tell, obviously, if this one remains to be true, although after Twitter, I don't know. I'm not so sure. I don't know if I want to pay $8 a month to subscribe to Mars Blue for a check mark. Number three, more plague. Oh, that's the last thing any of us need. Well, take a listen to this doom prophecy. Near the gates and within two cities, there will be two scourges, the likes of which has never seen. Famine within plague, people put out by steel, crying to the great immortal god for relief. Well, this doesn't sound fun at all. I'm not sure anybody wants this. I'm pretty sure everyone watching this has experienced more than enough plagues to last us a lifetime. Of course, it's unfortunately kind of foolhardy to think that humanity will never experience another viral epidemic because, well, germs are always going to exist unless we eradicate them entirely. So all we can do is brace ourselves for the next one and hopefully learn from the past. I mean, that's why we're looking all the way back to an old French astronomer who was writing things in the 15th century and the off chance that any of it might help us out. Well. He might be on the money with this one again, because recently in 2021, researchers in Siberia uncovered in a block of ice 33 strains of ancient novel viruses. Now, novel means that they haven't been discovered before, not that they're just kind of fun and no trivia. Personally, I would put them back in the iceberg, I think, and then I would put like a tarp or maybe some tape over it. I, I think we should just deal with that where it is and we should not be bringing any ancient prehistoric viruses into today's times. I think I'm good. Now what really concerns me about this quatrain is the picture that it paints. Near the gates and within two cities, the people will be put out by steel, crying to the great immortal god for relief. Oh, that's dramatic. Could this be a reference to some power taking out its own citizens? Armies firing at infected individuals? Now, it could be that, but it could 
also be possible that Nostradamus somehow had a powerful vision into the future and he was just watching an episode of The Last of Us and he was basing his predictions around that. Good on him for not spoiling that series for 500 years. Number 2. Economic Crisis Take a listen to this. No abbots, monks, no novices to learn. Honey shall cost far more than candle wax. So high the price of wheat that man is stirred to eat his fellow man in despair. Now, I'm not an economist. I'm a YouTuber, sort of. But I don't need to be an economist to tell you that things have been getting pretty expensive and everyone's feeling their purse strings tighten up. I can't tell you how many times this week I've had pasta with no sauce for dinner. Admittedly, I don't buy a ton of honey or candle wax, so I can't really comment on how accurate that all is, but I can definitely tell you that my weekly groceries are getting a lot more expensive. The fear of course here is that I think eating your fellow man in despair really does not sound like the good option. Now there are a couple different ways we could take this interpretation. We could take it very literally Literally, suggesting that things are going to get so dire and so bad that we'll have so little food to go around that we're forced to consume one another to survive, which really doesn't sound pleasant. And while I'm talking, I'd just like to throw out here, I am way too stringy to be valuable as meat. I mean, look at me, I'm like a bird, I'm hollow, so I, I wouldn't make a good meal out of me at all, so don't, don't even bother trying over here. Alternatively, it could be interpreted in a more esoteric way. And since he's an old astronomer, I'm sure he spoke esoterically most of the time. He could be referring to the idea of eating the rich. If people get so fed up with the costs of living on just about everything and decide to revolt and strike back at the people in charge, hoping to dismantle the systems in place, which, hey, funny enough, actually leads into a segue from my next point really well. It's almost like I set that up. Number one, great discord. Take a listen. The trumpet shakes with great discord, an agreement broken, lifting the face to heaven. The bloody mouth will swim with blood, the face anointed with milk and honey lies on the ground. Like most of Nostradamus' writings, this one does sound a bit like it's the opening monologue to one of the Lord of the Rings movies, and wow, honey again. Honey was like a really serious cause of concern for this guy. I think he might not have been an astronomer. He might just have been a man who took his morning tea incredibly seriously. So besides crying over spilled milk and honey, what do our great Nostradamus experts have to say about this one? Was Nostradamus banned from his Discord server and writing in against the tyrannical mods? Well, like all of the ones on this list, this unnerving prediction seems to suggest that dire violence will come to plague us, with unrest between the masses and classes leading to full-scale rebellion and riots. This little ditty seems to support that, with Nostradamus writing that sooner and later you will see great changes made, dreadful horrors, and vengeances. Ah, uh, well. I support great changes, definitely. I'm a huge fan of great changes, but I am not so sure about dreadful horrors and vengeances. I feel like I've seen more than enough of those. The last few years have seen more civil unrest than ever. Like this is the most upset I've seen people in my life, at least. With it seeming like that somewhere around the world there's a mass scale protest or riot every couple of weeks. You know, it's easy to flick on the news and you see that and wonder if eventually we're gonna hit a boiling point and we'll see some of those horrifying horrors and vengeances and all those mal thoughts that he was thinking up. And when it does, if we'll see some serious changes or hey, at the very least, maybe some positive progress towards the price of honey because apparently that's the most important cause in the world. Number five, World War Three. In his big book of predictions known as his quatrains, Nostradamus wrote that seven months the great war, people dead of evil doing. Rowan Evru shall not fall to the king. Now if you've watched any of our videos on Nostradamus, you'll know that he usually keeps his predictions pretty vague and cryptic, as a centuries old mystic astrologer is wont to do. But here he's treating us to a prediction so easy to read, even I can follow along. Nostradamus predicts that there will be a great war, and that if the quatrain is anything to go off of, Europe will be the theater for the conflict. But. In a small hope spot for the city of Rouen, France, they are not going to fall to the king. Good for them. That's the only city he specified is going to be okay. Now who could this king be referring to? A world leader? An army maybe? The mascot for Burger King? I know if any fast food mascot is going to start a world war, it is absolutely that guy. Although Grimace has always been a wild card. Don't trust him even a little bit. Now obviously jokes aside, this is a tense subject. 
The current situation in Europe is already a cause for serious global stress, and no one wants to see it develop any further, especially into a great war. Although that's a bit of a misnomer, isn't it? I'm not sure if great is the right word to describe any wars. Maybe in size, sure, but I don't think anyone involved in an international war would describe it to you as a great time. The quatrain doesn't specify when, but with the world watching Europe now, it's definitely on the back of all of our minds that we hope this doesn't come true. Let's take a break from bumming each other out talking about global conflicts. You having fun with the channel? Toss the subscribe our way to catch it all. Number four, asteroids. A great fire will fall from the sky for three nights. The cause will appear both stupefying and marvelous. Shortly afterwards, there will be an earthquake. Ever since a big rock wiped out the dinosaurs, I think it's been a little bit on the back of our minds worrying that maybe something like that might happen to us someday. If something is going to stop a T-Rex, I don't even feel a little bit confident about my odds. This quatrain here makes it seem like we've got to be watching the skies. And while I certainly hope this is just Nostradamus referring to the world's best 4th of July celebration and a whole long weekend fireworks session, people who spend a whole lot more time than me reading about Nostradamus theorize that this could be referring to an asteroid strike on our sweet blue planet, which is going to be both stupefying and marvelous, which honestly sounds very, very nice were it not for the earthquake. Lucky for us, and terrible for extinction event enthusiasts, sorry, our good friends at NASA have recently demonstrated their DART technology, short for Double Asteroid Redirection Test. And I gotta wonder how many acronyms they tried before landing on that one, because DART sounds so clean. It's a system in place to change the trajectory of asteroids, successfully, no less. Just a few weeks ago, for the first time in humanity's history, we changed the path of a celestial object. So take that, Nostradamus. Bet you didn't predict we were gonna go to space to push something out of the way. And hey, asteroids, you think you're so tough? Well, take that, never-ending cosmos and unending might of the eternal stars. We're just gonna push you right out of the way. We don't care. Number three, celestial fire. And before we move forward, we really got to think of a nickname for this guy. Nostradamus is just a mouthful and a half. Mussy? No, that's, that's way worse. Okay, never mind. We're just going to keep calling him Nostradamus for now. You know what? If you ghouls and goblins can think of a good Nostradamus nickname, throw that down in the comments because I am spending so much of time saying this guy's name. Our favorite Farsi and French man with no good nicknames wrote in his big book of predictions that there will be a celestial fire on the royal edifice. So what does that mean for us? What is a celestial fire if not a Destiny 2 melee ability? Warlocks are going to dominate a new crucible map? It's unlikely, as Nostradamus' predictions on Destiny's meta have frequently been inaccurate, and most historians believe he actually would have played a Voidwalker instead of a Dawnblade. Experts in transcribing Nostradamus' work believe that this excerpt from his poetry could be referring to the destruction of the royal palace, with many believing it to refer to the royal family in the UK. So should King Charles put a big fireproof umbrella over Buckingham Palace? Some have suggested that this could be far more dramatic, referring to Buckingham Palace being completely destroyed and from its ashes a new power rising. The prophet continues to say that an unlikely alliance will occur of two great powers that will come together. Oh, who would this new world order be? Benevolent to lead us to a new golden age? Or dark new overlords to oppress us all? It's always a possibility that it could be reptile people. Number two, man-eating. No abbots, monks, no novices to learn. Honey shall cost far more than candle wax. So high the price of wheat that man has stirred his fellow man to eat in his despair. Now, at first, this seems like the ramblings of an old man who just came back from Walmart and saw the price of honey and is going off on a tirade. But that little snippet about man eating his fellow man sticks out just a little bit, doesn't it? This prediction is pretty directly doomsaying with our good friend and master of mysticism, Nostradamus, suggesting that in the future, things are going to get so bad that food is going to become so expensive that the common fella won't be able to afford any honey, wheat, or Honey Nut Cheerios, and will be pushed in desperation to start eating his fellow man. Hey, there really was not a lot going on back then if the scariest thing he could think of was honey getting so expensive that it would cause a full-on societal breakdown and cause us all to start eating man. You think they're gonna sell that in grocery stores? Obviously this one is a bit drastic as far as his predictions go, and definitely a bit scary, unless you're the kind of person that watches The Walking Dead and wishes, gosh, I wish that was me. And if you are, you should probably talk to someone, they just want to help. But there is some truth to this. Prices of basic groceries are going up and up every year. I mean, you can walk into the Walmart and see the price of honey yourself. 
with inflation creeping his ugly little head a little more each year. It's been a consistent concern as well that bees are going to go extinct in our lifetime, with the population of honeybees declining rapidly yearly. For our sake and the bees, we need to do something to save the planet, if not just for the ecosystem and the planet as a whole, but also because apparently if we run out of honey, that's the first thing that causes us to all start going Texas Chainsaw Massacre on each other. Number one, great discord. The trumpet shakes with great discord, an agreement broken, lifting the face to heaven. The bloody mouth will swim with blood. The face anointed with milk and honey lies on the ground. Like most of Nostradamus's writings, this one sounds a bit like the opening monologue to one of the Lord of the Rings movies. And wow, hey, honey again. H honey was a really serious cause of concern for this guy. I think if nothing else, Nostradamus took his morning tea incredibly seriously. So besides crying over spilled milk and honey, what do the experts have to say about this one? Was Nostradamus banned from his Discord server and riding out against the tyrannical mods? Well, like most of the predictions on this list, this unnerving uh, quatrain seems to suggest that dire violence will plague us, with unrest between the classes leading to full-scale rebellion and riots. This little ditty seems to support that, with Nostradamus writing that Sooner and later you will see great changes made, dreadful horrors and vengeances. Well, I don't know about you, but I support great changes definitely, though I'm a little less sure about dreadful horrors and vengeances. The last few years have seen more civil unrest than ever, with it seeming like there's a mass scale protest or riot every couple of weeks somewhere in the world. It's easy to flick on the news and see that and wonder if it's eventually going to hit a boiling point, and when it does, if we'll see some serious changes or at the very least, some positive progress towards the price of honey. Because I'm really not looking to get eaten by anyone anytime soon. I'm, I'm just, look at me, I'm so twiggy, I will barely even make a good snack. Just, just pass me over, okay? Coming in hot at number five is the rapture, a true vintage as far as doomsday prophecies go. The rapture is a belief in Christian faith held by few, notably an American evangelical belief, referring to an apocalyptic level event that describes the day Jesus returns, which will be heralded by the pious, righteous believers being ascended to the heavens to sit up in the clouds and clink glasses with Tupac and Elvis, while those that remain will have to fend for themselves on the desecrated earth, which will be taken over by the Antichrist and his army of demons. Although when I describe it like that, it makes it sound a lot more like it's the plot to doom. The rapture has no specific date, instead sort of existing in a it'll happen when it happens kind of state, which means it's great for making predictions of, because roughly once a week, someone will say we've got the rapture coming and thankfully be proven wrong. But the way things have been going lately, it's hard not to believe it could be coming anytime soon. We've got plagues, war, I think we just need conquest and famine, and we've got ourselves all the horsemen of the apocalypse neatly lined up outside a stable. To take a quick second to lighten your load, if you've been liking what we do at Top 5 Scary, why not toss a little subscribe our way? I promise we don't only talk about end of days prophecies. We keep it scary, but you know, we keep it light. Number four, Baba Vanga was a blind Bulgarian clairvoyant, famous for several predictions, a lot of which have worryingly come true. For example, many people believe she accurately predicted Princess Diana's passing the September attacks and the 2004 tsunami. Although Baba Vanga passed away in 1994, she left us with several worrying predictions for the future. She claimed in 2022 that we would experience another pandemic, as researchers would uncover a virus in Siberia and there would be flooding and drought across the world, a famine in India due to temperature drops causing locust storms and concerningly a virtual reality takeover. Already we've seen some examples of this coming true. The UK experienced the driest summer it had ever been since the 30s being declared an official drought in August. France, Italy, and Portugal have all experienced record-breaking droughts as well this year. She predicted specifically Australia would experience a flood, and in July of 2022, Sydney experienced four months worth of rain in just four days leading to flooding. So, okay. Some of the blind clairvoyance predictions are coming true. That's stressful, but what does she have for a future? Well, don't start buying lottery tickets just yet, because Baba doesn't have anything too welcoming. She predicted that by 2023, Earth will change orbit, and by 2046, people will be living for hundreds of years through advanced technology. That part I don't mind so much. I wouldn't mind some robot hands. By 2100, she believed that the Earth's orbit will have changed sufficiently that the Earth will have moved too far, and an eternal night will fall over the sky. Not to worry, though, she predicted for us that the Earth Earth and mankind as a whole would end by 5,079. So it's only, you know, nearly 3,000 years of dark suffering. Absolutely great for the vampires, terrible for us. Number three, we all have an opinion on Elon Musk, I'm sure. 
Me, personally, I still haven't forgiven him for breaking up with Grimes. And Grimes, if you're watching, I'm open. Regardless of whether you think Musk is a brilliant mind or just a moron with a Twitter account, he's been very outspoken about his fear of AI, warning that by the year 2025, things are going to get unstable or weird, in his own words. He's spoken out about it for years opining that something needs to be done or regulated on an international level. Maybe that's why the guy is so eager to get off the planet and get onto a spaceship to Mars. This is something he is very passionate about, warning us that it's going to affect our lives in ways we can't even imagine. We are the first species capable of self-annihilation. It's hard to disagree. I mean, just in our lifetime, AI has already accelerated the technology once only thought possible in sci-fi. And if I have to be completely honest, not to be too pessimistic, I don't know if I trust humanity to be that responsible with technology. If you need some comfort though, and you're looking for a reason to not toss Siri into a blender just yet, Musk also claimed in 2011 that he would put a man on Mars by 2021, and I don't remember anyone talking about that too much, so he's not right all the time. However, Musk isn't the only notable tech figure who was concerned about AI. Stephen Hawking spoke out in 2017 and claimed that if left unchecked, AI could be the worst event in the history of our civilization. It brings dangers like powerful autonomous weapons or new ways for the few to oppress the many. I don't know about you, but if one of the smartest men to have ever been on Earth says that we should probably be careful for AI for fear of creating a machine race, Skynet, or maybe something that's gonna put us all in the matrix, maybe it's something to consider, you know? Maybe not everything needs a Wi-Fi connection. Number two, pretty much since we built the nuclear so we have been deeply concerned that we're going to all use them on each other. I don't think anyone involved with nuclear weapons thinks we're going to get up to anything good with them, unless you are a really big Fallout fan and you have just been itching for a chance to roam the wasteland and fight feral ghouls. In 1947, the Bulletin of Atomic Scientists created the Doomsday Clock as a graphic reminder of how eerily close we might be at any minute towards complete annihilation. As the hand inches towards midnight, it represents how close we are at any given moment to nuclear winter. As of this video, we are currently sitting at 100 seconds to midnight. It stood at 100 seconds for three years, but as the bulletin's official website reads, Steady is not good news. It means we haven't been taking it seriously enough yet. The bulletin urges the Russian and US presidents to identify comprehensive, actionable solutions on limiting nuclear weapon delivery systems, as well as seeking to eliminating the sole authority of launching a nuclear weapon falling in a single leader's hands, urging countries with nuclear capabilities to do the same. The demand to control nuclear weapons has been more relevant than it has in years, with growing fears all over. Full-scale nuclear conflict is one of the most real and present dangers facing humanity. Humanity. And really, all it takes is one to set off a chain of dominoes none of us can come back from. Except cockroaches. They will be totally fine. They, they'll probably be flourishing, actually. Happier in, in their lane. Number one. Nostradamus was a French astrologer, physician, and probably history's most well-known seer. He's like the Michael Jordan of predicting cryptic doom sayings and warnings. He's the original doomsday prophet, and while thankfully none of his more apocalyptic predictions have happened yet, He's been disturbingly accurate for the last six centuries, and his predictions have enlightened us just as much as they have terrified us. He was able to predict things no one should have, most recently, seemingly accurately predicting the circumstances surrounding the passing of Queen Elizabeth and her succession by Prince Charles. Nostradamus made many predictions, but one of his most jarring is this delightful little passage right here. For 40 years, the rainbow will not be seen. For 40 years, it will be seen every day. The dry earth will grow more parched, and there will be great floods when it is seen. Okay, so 40 years without Skittles, and then 40 years of Skittles. That is the sole thing he is referring to vis-a-vis -vis rainbows, right? I wish. Now, some have theorized that this could be referring to the scorching of a world annihilated after a nuclear but it's also possible that it could be referring to a natural collapse of the world, from the climate changing worryingly fast in a lot of ways that are becoming increasingly difficult to control. 2022, for example, was the sixth hottest record year in human history, with countries across the globe experiencing record-breaking heat waves. The Antarctic sea ice hit another record low, and it might be hard to take that in any other way than the most pessimistic option, because it does kind of sound like the Earth is going to grow dry and somehow also start overflowing with floods and we're all gonna start having to fight wars over water like we're in Mad Max. Much like what Baba Vanga was speaking of, things are getting dangerously close regarding climate change across the globe. Unlike most doomsday prophecies, this one has a very clear and concerning path 
that unless we make some serious changes, could stand a chance, a dangerous chance, at becoming true. Number five, realistic holograms. In the episode Holidays of Future Past, we get another glimpse into the future timeline of the Simpsons family. Bart is living in the refurbished Springfield Elementary, which is now low income housing, meaning Bart is still under the thumb of Principal Skinner, who's now Landlord Skinner of the lofts at Springfield Elementary. A little side prediction, I absolutely think this is gonna happen. I definitely think people are gonna live in decommissioned schools. You know, we're not gonna need them anymore if we're all just downloading Wikipedia onto a USB into our consciousness. Okay, I'm getting sidetracked. Anyway, to pass the time, Bart is still into itchy and scratchy, except instead of watching it on TV, Bart watches it as a live projected hologram in front of him. Itchy and scratchy then proceed to do exactly what they do best, which is scratch, bite, and inflict grievous bodily harm on one another, which then splatters all over the walls of Miss Krabappel's former classroom behind him. Now, hologram technology is already at leaps and bounds, making incredible strides. I mean, in our lifetime, we've seen it go from science fiction to regular reality. The Tupac hologram blew our minds when we first saw it, still blows mine. We even saw Homer as a hologram actually making a surprise appearance at a Comic Con a few years back with his father, Matt Groening. Now, the real development will be when we get holograms like shown in this episode that you could interact with physically or could have an interaction with the environment around you, which I think is all kinds of scary. I mean, imagine if a hologram, digital light conjured, could touch you or grab you. Imagine the ramifications of that. Or don't, to be honest, because I actually don't really want to think about it. But if you do want something to think about, why not thinking about subscribing to Top 5 Scary? We got videos every single day for your viewing pleasure. Let's keep going. Number four economic crash. Look, things aren't doing too great economy-wise lately. You tried to buy butter recently? A trip to the grocery store just isn't what it used to be. And maybe the Simpsons writing team knows more than they're letting on. In a recent-ish episode from the 24th season, Homer goes to prep school. Homer meets a new friend who's voiced by Tom Waits, bizarrely enough. The man overhears Homer at Moe's talking about how he doesn't think society could survive a collapse. And the man agrees with him and warns Homer that soon there will be economic disaster and the supermarkets will collapse and the United States will come down with it. Homer insists that America can't fall because it's a strong empire like Rome. The man then pulls out an iPad and shows Homer an unspecified vague video with no dates that warn him of a vague impending apocalypse which is more than enough to convince a simpleton like Homer to join their cult-like group of survivalist preppers prepping for what they believe to be the inevitable collapse. Of course, this is a pretty real phenomenon. We all know about preppers by now. Preppers are a recognized group. There was that reality show for a while, so that's all very real. Whether or not there's an incoming collapse and the supermarkets will be empty and we'll all be raiding, Who's to say? I'm not an economist, I'm a YouTube host, so all I can say is that I've noticed butter is a lot more expensive than they usually are. In the end, Homer inadvertently triggers an event that causes a collapse in Springfield, but to his and the prepper's dismay, Springfield bounces back like nothing happens. So maybe we don't need to be worried. You know, in the event of a societal shutdown, as long as we have each other, and a couple people remember some good jokes from The Simpsons, I think we could survive an apocalypse together. Number three. Cloning Blues. The Simpsons heads towards the future fairly often in the modern seasons these days. I, I didn't know that. I guess once you've been on for 34 years, you're gonna have to start inching towards the future eventually. Now in previous episodes set in the near future, like the classics Lisa's Wedding or Bark to the Future, they've been surprisingly bang on with their predictions. I'm sure we all know about the, they make a joke about President Trump in Bark to the Future, but also some pretty smaller stuff here and there, like FaceTime being the primary method of communicating in the future. Well, the 18th episode of season 25, Days of Future Future, takes us back to the future Simpsons timeline. The episode shows us a grim fate, Homer's death. The family is devastated until Homer is swiftly cloned and replaced, memories intact. Of course, Homer being Homer, this new Homer does not last very long, and his clones have to be replaced like batteries in a smoke detector, and he ends up going through Dr. Dr. Frink's entire supply of clone bodies in a matter of days. Eventually, Homer's consciousness is given over to a robotic body, kind of a la Westworld. Now obviously this technology is pretty fantastical and I would wager we're definitely a few years off and at the very least before we'll see a human being stepping out of a test tube with their memories intact and ready to go face the world. But I think it's more likely coming soon than it is later. Number two, Journey to Mars. 
Look, eventually we're gonna have to leave this planet behind, you know? It had a good run, can't deny that, but someday we gotta just move on, you know? It's the nature of humanity, exploring beyond the final frontier. In the 16th episode of season 27, we get a possible glimpse into this, with the episode featuring Marge and Lisa volunteering to be some of humanity's first pioneers into space, volunteering to go live on Mars. In the episode, a private company called Exploration Inc. is projecting to send people into space to colonize the third rock from the sun by the year 2026 and are looking for the first colonists. Marge learns during the training period that much of the skills they're looking for are similar to housework, one of Marge's favorite activities, leading her to become the perfect candidate, irritating Lisa who wanted to be the first person on Mars. In the end, the two of them end up living there by 2050. Now, in the real world, Going to Mars is a massive goal for the private company SpaceX, the other company that the CEO of Twitter runs. In the past, they've speculated that they would have people reaching Mars by now, but have pushed back a bit on that deadline. Their most recent estimations claim that by 2029, SpaceX will be sending out the first manned flights to the red planet to check it out. Will we get there by then? Honestly, I can see it happening. I think that's another one where we're inching closer with each passing day. The only question now is who will get there first, us or the Simpsons in 2026? That's the deadline we've got to meet or beat. And number one, zombies. This one honestly came up a lot more than I think it would as I was looking for Simpsons predictions. Somebody in the writer's room has a very firm belief that this is how society is going to end. Now it could just be because The Walking Dead has been really popular for the last 10 years and we as a people love zombies in our pop culture, but it shows up enough times in Simpsons future episodes that I thought it was worth noting. It's worth noting in two different episodes on this list even, you know, the ones that give us a look into the Simpsons canon, they both reference a zombie apocalypse. In the ending of Homer Goes to Prep School, after Homer sees that society would survive a collapse, at the end of the episode we see a shot of a meteor with zombies coming to Springfield. In fact, it's almost lightly implied that in the Simpsons universe there was kind of a low grade zombie apocalypse. Because then, in the episode Days of Future Future, zombies seem to be just part of society, with Lisa working at a soup kitchen looking after the undead. Is this a glimpse into a dark future? I I honestly think the way they treat zombies in The Simpsons is more or less how we deal with zombies. I don't think we'd have a full blown Walking Dead thing. Maybe that would happen for a couple of weeks, but honestly I think we'd just work around it. I think you'd see zombies working minimum wage jobs, I think they'd be Uber Eats couriers or just like hanging out on the streets. I'm not afraid of seeing a shell of someone's former self shambling around as a corpse. I hope The Simpsons never ends, if nothing else, so they can always be around to predict the future. Number 5 on this list is the rise of artificial intelligence. The moon in the full of night over the high mountain, the new sage with a lone brain sees it. By his disciples invited to be immortal, eyes to the south, hands in bosoms, bodies in the fire. That was a poem from the one and only Nostradamus. Probably the most famous prophesizer of all time, if that's even a thing. Nostradamus was a French astrologer and seer and is most known for his work called The Prophecies where he pops the heck off and prophesizes pretty much the entire world's future. This poetic quatrain that I read is from that book and people believe it to be in reference to artificial intelligence taking over. Right now AI is definitely the craze. Pretty much any billionaire who's anybody is currently investing insane amounts of money into AI thinking it'll be the way of the future. At the same time though, a lot of them are coming out and warning us about how dangerous this could be when AI is able to get consciousness. Well, in this poem, Nostradamus says the new sage with a lone brain sees it and people think that's in reference to AI getting consciousness. This is the new sage and it can only know. Then he goes on to say that there are bodies in the fire and all that jazz and that just really doesn't sound like a fun time at all. Experts still think that we're a ways away from getting AI to reach full consciousness, but they're pretty much all in agreement that it's going to happen one day. They're also pretty much in agreement that computers and robots will be smarter than humans because they can just take in more information and process data way quicker than we would ever be able to. Comment down below when you think AI is going to start causing serious problems for humans. Is it in 2022 or do we still have a bit more time left? Number four on this list is the rapture. 
the rapture is another one of those doomsday predictions that's been thrown around for what seems like ever. According to Wikipedia, the rapture is an eschatological theological position held by some Christians, particularly within branches of American evangelicalism, consisting of an end time event when all Christian believers who are alive, along with resurrected believers, would rise in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. Basically what this means is that for those devout Christian followers, life is going to get pretty awesome, but for everyone else, life on earth is going to suck. People have speculated that the Earth would turn into a hell-like place where demons roam the streets. As you can probably imagine, this would be pretty bad and wouldn't be the greatest existence ever. The rapture has been discussed as a possibility for years now, but the most recent claim has it pegged for 2028. Granted, this is always changing and it feels like at any given year, someone is prophesizing that the rapture could be coming. At this rate, it feels like it could come tomorrow, but nobody really knows. If the rapture was to happen though, no reason to think that 2022 couldn't be the year. Number three is an asteroid. Now an asteroid hitting Earth has been talked about as a potential doomsday world ending scenario for pretty much as long as we've been aware of asteroids. We've talked a lot about this on this channel before and depending on the size of asteroid, the entire planet could be totally wiped out. In fact, this has gotten some more attention in pop culture recently with the movie Don't Look Up. Starring Leonardo DiCaprio and Jennifer Lawrence, the whole movie is about a massive asteroid coming to Earth and potentially killing all of us if it hits. Well, according to the Messiah Foundation International, we only have a few years left before this becomes a sad and terrifying reality. 2026 is the year to mark on the calendar, folks, only four years from now. Riaz Ahmad Gohar Shadi was a spiritual leader who's credited with starting up the Messiah Foundation International. He wrote a book called The Religion of God and in that book he's predicted 2026 as being the year the world is going to get hit with a massive celestial object. This object would be big enough to destroy the whole planet and all life on Earth. Now I looked into this prophecy and from what I found, I think we should be okay. Most experts who study space think that we have quite some time before we need to start worrying about such things. The closest thing that we're currently aware of is an asteroid called 2010 RF-12. This is apparently the asteroid with the highest probability of hitting Earth, with about a 5% chance of doing so. However, this also isn't supposed to occur until 2095, giving us plenty of time to prepare. Now I'm going to be honest, who really knows with this stuff? Space is pretty crazy and we're learning new things every day. Maybe there is an asteroid we're unaware of or that scientists haven't revealed to the public that's coming to Earth and for that reason I suppose that this prophecy might happen. But if it does then at least we still have four years to plan for it and hopefully we'll just avoid it altogether. Number two on this list is World War III. This is something that hasn't just been prophesized by one person, but by multiple. However, if we did want to put this on one guy, then our main man Nostradamus is back at it again because he's been noted as predicting a third world war in 2022. A great article by the Daily Record talks about this possibility when they write, There are serious concerns over a possible global war in the coming year, and one possible cause could be the ongoing tensions between China and Taiwan. The incursions from nuclear-capable Chinese warplanes has ratcheted up tensions over the tiny US-backed island. Relations between the two nations are at the worst in 40 years, Taiwan's defense minister said at the end of last year. Western allies of Taiwan have expressed their concern at China's open display of military might and it's widely feared any form of armed confrontation could quickly escalate into a global conflict. Meanwhile, Russia has reportedly approved plans for urgent mass graves amid fears a war could break out after an invasion of Ukraine. Russian outlet MK say that the burial sites were constructed as a priority after they allegedly appeared on leaked legal documents that are expected to come into force on February 1st. Those are just some of the possible scenarios where something major could start, but there are also tons of other areas in the world in disarray right now where I could see something horrible taking place. All it would require is a few frustrated people deciding to push the button and then BAM, we're at a place of no return and might damage our planet beyond repair. Hopefully all of this won't come to fruition and those who have the power to send us into war will exercise their power to also keep us out of it. Number one on this list is a lethal virus. Known as the Nostradamus of the Balkans, the blind mystic Baba Vanga has some very scary things coming in 2022 for humans. One of the worst ones, and probably most triggering at this point, is a massive lethal virus attacking Earth. After several years of being in a pandemic, I think it's safe to say that humans are pretty tired of lethal diseases. 
Baba Vanga isn't holding back on us though, and she expects this one to be really bad. It's apparently going to come from Siberia and will all start due to global warming. Now this honestly might not be that far off at all, which makes it that much more scarier. Guarantee BBVA writes, In August 2016, in a remote corner of Siberian tundra called the Yamal Peninsula in the Arctic Circle, an individual died and at least 20 people were hospitalized after being infected by anthrax. The theory is that over 75 years ago, a reindeer infected with anthrax died and its frozen carcass became trapped under a layer of frozen soil known as permafrost. There it stayed until a heat wave in the summer of 2016 when the permafrost thawed. This exposed the reindeer corpse and released infectious anthrax into nearby water and soil and then into the food supply. More than 2,000 reindeer grazing nearby became infected, which then led to the small number of human cases. The fear is that this will not be an isolated case. As the earth warms, more permafrost will melt. Under normal circumstances, superficial permafrost layers about 50 centimeters deep melt every summer. But now global warming is gradually exposing older permafrost layers. Frozen permafrost soil is the perfect place for bacteria to remain alive for very long periods of time, perhaps as long as a million years. That means melting ice could potentially open up a Pandora's box of diseases. So Baba Vanga might sadly be onto something here and that could just be horrible. There could be diseases that are frozen that we just don't know anything about and might absolutely ravage the population. Honestly guys, we just need to pray that our immunities can hold up if something like this did ever happen. Number five. One of the earliest on Baba's prediction list is that by 2023, Earth will have shifted sufficiently enough to alter its orbit. And we don't fully know what she means by that, but I can tell you that if Earth's orbit were to change at all, the consequences would be absolutely disastrous. I'm not entirely sure how Earth is supposed to shift orbit. Maybe we're all gonna get too heavy, we'll throw the gravity off, maybe we're jumping around too much. Anyway, the universe works in a very specific way. It's very finely crafted. Everything is exactly where it should be. And if that balance gets thrown off, it'll affect, well, you know, just about everything. The Earth shifting its orbit would immediately result in increased temperatures, soaking the world in radiation. Increased temperatures would lead to glaciers melting, sea levels rising, and that usually leads into chaos across the globe. Of course, if we shifted off our orbit, it wouldn't stop there. We'd also experience a new ice age and crushing periods of extended darkness, which would spell disaster in ways we couldn't even comprehend on the ecosystems. And most worrisome of all, we would basically give vampires a key to the earth. I have to assume that our position in the solar system is the only thing preventing them from taking over right now. Like I mentioned, this is supposedly supposed to occur in 2023, so luckily we can find out really soon if this one is coming true, and for all of our sakes, I sincerely hope not. Number four. Another claim for 2023 is that we will experience the end of natural live births altogether. Vanga claimed that going forward, all birthing will be done in laboratories. World leaders will decree what the people of each nation should look like, and they will be able to finely tune their physical and appearances like we're all characters in The Sims. Well, that actually might be kind of fun. Do you think we'll be able to do that after we've already been born? Wouldn't mind customizing myself up a little bit, you know, tighten up the jaw, add a couple cool scars, maybe one over the eye like Geralt. This one is definitely a bit out there compared to some of the other ones on the list, but there is some truth to the words. The birth rate is declining right now. In 1950, the birth rate was 36.9% per 1,000 people, while now it's only 18.5%. And some analysts predict by 2050 it could dip as low as 14.6%. So maybe in the future we will start to see more of a push towards this kind of thing. Lab birth and all that. That bit about world leaders deciding what their people look like though, I don't know about that. I feel like people would disagree with that. What if the current leader only wants children that look like Danny DeVito? You're really gonna wait nine months for a Danny DeVito baby? A whole society of DeVitos run it? No, actually, the more I'm talking about this, I want this. This is a prediction I hope comes true. Number three, another of her predictions say that by the year 2046, technology will have advanced sufficiently enough that the average life expectancy will raise past 100 due to rises in organ transplant technology and prosthetic and cybernetic implants. Now that is something I can really get into. I have been wanting cybernetic everything since I saw Luke get that sweet robot hand in Star Wars. This technology has been advancing with every year with the stuff of former sci-fi legend becoming more and more practical and real. The prediction goes on to state that in the near future, organs will be grown and sold like any other product, developed en masse and distributed internationally. 
the ramifications of that would be unbelievable. Imagine for a minute how many illnesses and diseases would just disappear overnight if you were able to order a new kidney on Amazon and have it delivered to your house the next day. While we're not quite at the level where we're 3D printing lungs and shipping them out, scientists have actually been experimenting with growing human organs in labs, with liver buds being grown from human stem cells. Now the technology is still pretty far off, with these little mini organoids lacking key features that real organs do, like, you know, growing, mostly being used to study for now, but in some cases, these lab-grown organs have actually been transplanted into mice successfully. So who's to say what progress will look like in the next 10 years' time? Well, Baba Vanga, I guess she's the one to say, that's why we're doing this. Number two, another of Baba's predictions is that the world will experience something called a solar tsunami. And if the name isn't enough of an indicator, it really does not sound that pleasant. So if you are picturing a delightful wave of summer sun, why don't you keep thinking that? A solar storm is a burst of energy from the sun which sends electrical charges, magnetic fields, and radiation towards the Earth. This effect is what creates the northern lights, which are very pretty, but the solar tsunami Vanga predicted would be one of cataclysmic proportions, claiming that it would be powerful as billions upon billions of nuclear weapons descending on the Earth. Solar storms are predicted to cause mass damage to technology, causing worldwide blackouts, with some doomsayers going so far as to say that it could cause a worldwide technological shutdown, sending humanity back to the dark ages. Might be the first thing to get me off my phone for five minutes, so maybe that wouldn't be such a bad thing. This kind of thing does occur already on a much smaller scale, with some smaller solar waves causing radio blackouts, but luckily, nothing on a massive scale of a full-blown solar tsunami has occurred yet. Baba Vanga never gave a time or a date for when she thought the solar tsunami would occur, just that it was on the horizon for humanity, and we should be expecting it, I guess, sometime. So I guess keep checking the weather app, and uh, if it shuts down while you're checking it, and all the lights turn off in your house, uh, yeah, that's probably a bad sign. Maybe, I don't know, get into the bunker, stock up on tuna and beans. Number one, I know, we just did a virus. Well, keep the masks around, maybe. Because before her passing, Baba Vanga predicted that due to climate change melting the ice around the world, a new virus would be discovered in Siberia and the world would experience another pandemic. I don't know, a sequel that's similar to the first? I feel like it's been done before, kind of played out. Well, in July 2021, a team of researchers discovered within two samples of ice from the Tibetan plateau that contained ancient viruses, locked away and preserved in the virus like the mosquito from Jurassic Park in the amber. According to the analysts, these ice samples were at least 15,000 years old. The researchers also discovered embedded within the ice samples were 33 viral genetic codes. While four of the codes were recognized viruses that usually attack bacteria, the remaining 28 genetic codes were novel, meaning that this is the first time they've been discovered, like a time capsule just full of stuff to make you cough. Number five on this list is the Great Flood. Johann Staffer, a respected German mathematician and astrologer, predicted that a Great Flood would cover the world on February 25th, 1524, when all of the known planets would be in alignment under Pisces, a water sign. Hundreds of pamphlets announcing the coming flood were issued and set in motion a general panic. Count von Iglaheim, a German nobleman, went so far as to build a three-story ark. Though there was a light rain on the day of the predicted flood, no actual flooding materialized. So that was an entry from Britannica talking about world-ending scenarios that didn't pan out. Our man Johan definitely missed the mark on this one and was proven incorrect, but maybe he just got the dates wrong. Potentially, he was just 500 years too early. Fast forward 500 years to present day and we are now on the verge of potentially a great flood again. The world is heating up and the ice caps are melting faster than they ever have. 1.2 trillion tons. That is how much ice is melting every single day and the number continues to increase. Ever visited the island nation of Tuvalu? Well, if you haven't, then you'd better go soon because before long it won't exist anymore. 
It's currently getting flooded by rising sea levels and there's an evacuation in order to move all the citizens to New Zealand. This flooding won't just happen to Pacific Island nations either, but it's coming for all of us. Here's a map of North America if all the ice melted in the world. There are a lot of major cities on that map that are now totally underwater. This is going to happen worldwide and will have millions, maybe even billions of people out of their homes with nowhere to live. The fallout would be absolutely catastrophic and could cause the end of the world. Number four on this list is a water shortage. So we actually just talked about how there might be too much water, but what about the total opposite of that? Not enough. Well, Baba Vanga is back once again to say that she believes 2022 is the year that the world deals with its most detrimental water shortages yet. When I say water shortages in this context, I'm not referring to ocean water, I'm referring to drinking water and the lack of it. Already there are many countries in the world that suffer from a lack of clean drinking water. Something that a lot of us take for granted these days is an everyday struggle for those living on the opposite side of the world. Sadly, Baba Vanga thinks it's only going to get worse. What does a lack of drinking water mean? Well, it means that a lot of people are going to die. Already millions die annually from a lack of drinking water and that number will continue to rise if water goes out completely. Similar to a later entry that we're going to discuss, if there is truly a water shortage across the globe, then people are going to start fighting over it. Water will now become the new currency and everyone is going to want it. We can't just manufacture water out of thin air for billions of people, so those that have water will become extremely powerful. Humans need a few important things for overall survival. Air, water and food are the three most important. Take out one of those three things and I could see a world ending scenario arising very quickly. Number three on this list is the Malthusian theory. Now I've actually talked about this theory before in a similar video, but I think I need to bring it up in this video as well. Malthusianism, as defined by Wikipedia, is the idea that population growth is potentially exponential, while the growth of the food supply or other resources is linear, which eventually reduces living standards to the point of triggering a population die-off. This theory was by Thomas Robert Malthus and was proposed several hundred years ago. If we think about it, then it does make a decent amount of sense. Eventually, there will simply be too many humans on the earth for us to grow food for all of those humans. Now, one thing Malthus didn't account for is human innovation and the fact that we're constantly progressing technology. In fact, I think based on our current population, he would have believed this theory to have already taken hold, but due to human innovation and our advanced food growing technology, it hasn't. That being said, there's certainly still time. With the world population very close to touching 8 billion people and it's still rising, we're getting into dangerous territory when it comes to the Malthusian theory. Already it's believed that close to a billion people suffer from serious famine every single day. The more people that we bring into this world, the more that number will rise. Soon we could get to a place where food and the ability to grow food is so valuable that it almost turns into its own currency. This might might not end the world immediately, but it could cause countries to start going to war over food with one another. Anarchy could fall upon the planet as humans grow hungry every single day. Here's to hoping that human innovation can stay ahead of the curve and keep everybody well fed. Number two on this list is painful, violent, and bloody business. Alright, so that's a bit of a weird title for an entry, but that's actually part of a quote from Boris Johnson, the Prime Minister of Britain. In that quote, he's referencing Russia and their potential invasion of Ukraine. If you guys were unfamiliar, then right now there is a very real and very serious threat that the Russians attempt to invade Ukraine. This is because recently they mobilized roughly 100,000 of their troops and put them at various points across the border to Ukraine. Other world leaders have seen this and are accusing Russia of planning an invasion, but Putin adamantly denies it, basically saying that he can move his troops wherever he likes in his own country. This may be true, but the writing is on the walls. Everybody knows that Russia wants to own Ukraine and haven't acknowledged their claim of being an independent country, believing they are simply an extension of Russia. It was only a few years prior that we saw Russia annex the Crimean Peninsula, and it seems like now they're hungry for more. This time, it would be far bloodier though. Boris Johnson and Joe Biden have both come out and warned Russia against doing such an action. Biden has come out and said that such an attack would change the world. This in itself is a prophecy 
and it isn't a good one. If Russia was to attack Ukraine, then the response from NATO would be swift and unforgiving. That means Russia is now fighting NATO, and if Russia is out here fighting NATO, you already know that other countries are going to get involved. China may want a piece of this action, and if I had to guess, they would probably take Russia's side. Meaning that before we know it, we would end up in this massive conflict with some of the world's biggest powers. This is the closest that we've gotten to World War III in a long time. Painful, violent, and bloody business. These are the words that a world leader is using to describe what is to come if Russia invades Ukraine. A war involving the countries that I just said could escalate way too quickly and has serious world ending or at least world world damaging potential. Fingers crossed everybody can chill the heck out and we don't need to go to war anytime soon. And finally number one on this list is global warming. I really hate this one guys. I truly hate how real this entry is, but it does need to be discussed. Our main man Nostradamus is back at it again with the predix, and this time he really nailed it. Like the sun, the head will seal the shining sea. The live fish of the black sea will almost boil. That is part of a Nostradamus prediction discussing what is going to happen to our world and where the temperatures are headed. Basically, they aren't headed anywhere good. Here are a few scary stats from Earth Day Org. Within the next two decades, global temperatures are likely to rise one and a half degrees Celsius. The last seven years have been the warmest on record, and more than one million species are at risk of extinction by climate change. And guess what, friends? We are one of those one million species at risk. We've already talked about the potential of a great flood and all of that, but famine is going to become a major problem too. It's hard to grow crops on a good day and try doing it when it gets way too hot. You can't. This is going to be devastating to some of the poor countries in the world and cause ripple effects that we don't even know about. I feel like I don't even really need to go down the rabbit hole of how bad global warming really is because at this point we've most likely heard it all a million times over. I for one am pretty sick of hearing about it and would love for the world to collectively change their way so that I no longer need to include such entries on lists like this. Let's just hope that we can figure it out and don't prove our guy Nostradamus the prophet of doom correct. Number 5 on our list for scary predictions from the princess of prognostication for 2023 is a nuclear meltdown. Vanga predicted that soon another nuclear meltdown will occur at a currently unnamed nuclear power plant that will explode. Now, followers of Vanga have cited Chernobyl as proof of the oracle soothsaying, believing that she predicted it years before it occurred. Now, If you need anyone to spell out just how bad a nuclear meltdown would be, luckily, and I use that term extremely lightly, we have Chernobyl as a harrowing monument to the dangers of untethered nuclear power. Chernobyl, if you don't know from not having seen the HBO TV show or the Call of Duty 4 level, which is where I get most of my information about world issues and politics, was a nuclear power plant outside of Pripyat that experienced a horrific meltdown. When Chernobyl's reactor burst, the blast was equivalent to the force of 500 nuclear explosions. Now, one is already just about the worst thing that could ever possibly happen. Two is pretty bad. 500 is inconceivable. So I don't think anyone among us wants another one. There is obviously some worry with current conflicts over Europe that this could be what Baba Vanga is predicting. Outside forces and damage could trigger a chain reaction that leads to severe long lasting consequences. Chernobyl still isn't habitable by humans and scientists estimate it won't be for the next 20,000 years. Which is a shame because honestly it does look like it could be a cool place to live. The sites are pretty cool. We can't afford another Chernobyl anywhere in the world with everything going on. In 1967 as well, Baba Vanga predicted that you would watch this video and give us a subscribe. It is just astonishing how well she was able to predict the future. Number 4. Bioweaponry I think we've all lived through enough biological disasters for one lifetime, right? I'm going to spend the rest of my life with a bottle of hand sanitizer near me. Well, Vanga warns us that there could still be more on the horizon. One of her predictions for the near future is that she has prophesized that an unnamed big country will carry out bioweaponry research on human beings. She theorized that hundreds of thousands of people will be affected by these sinister experiments and that it could leak out into the rest of the world. Now, again, this goes without saying, but biological weaponry is banned worldwide. It's one of those things that really gets you into trouble. I mean, in eighth grade, I threw a booger at a girl and I was charged by the United Nations for biological warfare. The United Nations effectively bans any experiments or any conduct, such as stockpiling viruses and dangerous bacteria, but 
but you know, let's be honest, the UN says a lot of things and that doesn't stop everybody. There are some who theorize that bioweaponry is already being researched across the globe secretly. Things like weaponized viruses or chemical warfare, all very illegal, all very scary. I have played way too many of the Resident Evil games in my lifetime to not be terrified of bioweaponry. We've touched a bit on this subject on previous videos about Baba Vanga, but Baba Vanga predicted as well in 2022 that we would experience a new virus and a new pandemic. Recently, in 2021, researchers in Siberia uncovered 33 strains of novel viruses encased perfectly in ice, samples over 15,000 years old. Could this be what Vanga is referring to here? Personally, I think a secret organization making a bioweapon out of generations old viruses sounds way too much like the plot to a scary horror movie or video game than it does real life, so I'm very much hoping that Baba Vanga was wrong about this one. I mean, she's not always right, you know? You need a couple of them to be wrong to make the real ones stick out all the more. Number 3. Virtual Reality Takeover Hey, what's your favorite reality? Mine is occasionally this one, although I am pretty partial to some synthetic realities as well. It definitely seems like over the last few years I've spent more time inside digital worlds than I have paying attention to the world around me. I mean, can you blame me? Someone had to collect all those Korok seeds. Well, according to Baba Vanga, maybe we're all going to be spending a lot more time hooked up into our digital worlds. Vanga predicts that humanity is going to start absorbing itself into a virtual world. She said in 2022, people would spend more time online and in screens more than ever. Typical grandmother. It's hard to tell her she's wrong though. I mean, you're on a screen right now and I'm talking into a screen right now. We've seen the world become more online than ever in the past few years. Baba Vanga, you would have absolutely loved Black Mirror. They made like five seasons of that show. It was basically all about this. You don't really need to be a blind mystic with a gift for prophecy to predict that virtual reality is coming. I mean, Meta has made no secret about how they believe the metaverse to be the next greatest leap in human advancement. Although, if you want my advice, I think the visuals still need a little tweaking because I'm not sure that I want to leave behind all the beauty of the real human experience just to go live in a simulated reality where everything looks like I'm trapped in the loading screen for Wii Sports Bowling forever. Investors and tech startups are racing to be the one to perfect the metaverse. And I do think we'll get there eventually, 2007 graphics notwithstanding. Once we've plundered this beautiful world for all its natural resources and drained the seas and stars, I think we'll all come aboard Mark Zuckerberg's cold, desolate ark and live hooked up into the machine spirit. I'm very optimistic about the future, if you couldn't tell that. Number 2. Water Scarcity what is the most important resource humanity has? Cadbury cream eggs? No. It's water, of course. As much as we think of water as an infinitely replenishing resource, we're running out of it faster than any of us would ever care to admit. Only 3% of all water on the world is fresh water, and two-thirds of that water is tucked away in frozen glaciers. The World Wildlife Foundation dictates that somewhere around 2.7 billion people find water scarce for at least one month of the year. Baba Vanga predicted that by 2022, the world would experience a global drought, leading to water shortages internationally. I mean, without it, we're nothing. And unless we all want to start wearing still suits like Dune, drinking our urine and sweat, we should probably try and do something about it, you know? Something on a big global scale, maybe, not just paper straws. Countries across the world are already experiencing shortages. It goes hand in hand with the rising temperatures seen globally, with temperatures in Europe nearing towards 50 degrees. The UK this year experienced one of its hottest summers it had ever seen, and this year our July was the 6th hottest July on record, like ever, like since they started writing down information about how hot it was. This is one of those times where being really high up on a hottest list is not actually a good thing. Now much like most people, I absolutely loved Mad Max Fury Road, but I think the parts that I thought were really cool were the cool cars and the leather jackets and punching guys in the sand, and not the part where post-apocalyptic tyrant warlords control the world by hoarding what limited water exists and oppressing the downtrodden. So I'd like to avoid that if we can. Also, I can't drive, so I don't really know how long I would last in the wasteland. Number one, alien invasion. Our number one spot is also Vanga's most out there prediction. Like, 
out of this world out there. In 2022, Baba Vanga claims that an alien life is going to arrive on Earth traveling on an asteroid called Oumuamua to scope out the situation here. The name is Hawaiian in origin, meaning a messenger from afar arriving first. I kind of feel like if there was ever an asteroid that would very likely contain an envoy of visitors from another planet, it would have to be that one. I mean, listen to that name. Now this asteroid is real, and it is an object from another solar system altogether passing through for an intergalactic sightseeing tour. Now not to burst your bubble too much, but this asteroid actually has already passed through Earth's orbit back in 2017, but I guess they didn't see anything too worthwhile yet. You know what, aliens, I gotta say, this isn't really the best time for us to have company right now over. As I've listed off in this video, we're kind of dealing with some problems right now. We're, we're still kind of cleaning up a little bit, you know. Give us some notice. We just need to clean out the cupboards, fix a few of our global catastrophes, end all conflicts, get everybody to be friends, and then we can have you guys over. Recently, NASA just deflected an asteroid in a historic moment, successfully deflecting an asteroid's course. Probably a huge flex to the aliens, letting them know straight up, hey, if you guys want to swing by on an asteroid and we're not feeling it, we can just push you out of the way with an interplanetary do not disturb sign. But don't, don't feel too threatened about that, please, aliens. We were just trying out our new asteroid deflecting software. We're not the most friendly species, but if you guys want to come check out what we're doing, we can meet in the middle somewhere maybe on some neutral ground. Maybe the moon? We put a flag up there, but I promise that's not ours. You know, we, we can just share that. Number five, a bioweapon disaster. Baba Vanga has been called the Nostradamus of the Balkans, and if you're a fan of this channel, presumably you've heard a lot about Baba Vanga. When she was a girl, a sandstorm blinded her. However, when a door closes, God opens a window, and although she lost her sight, she was given a second sight, an ability to allegedly see into the future. And over the years, she's made quite a name for herself, making in several predictions. Now any old hack can predict stuff, but it takes a real prophet to land the nail on the head. One of Baba Vanga's more concerning predictions to say the least is that in the near immediate future, there's going to be a bioweapon disaster carried out by a large nation. Now of course, in classic Baba Vanga tradition, she was just cryptic enough to not mention which country's doing this. As, as well, it's hard to say what exactly she meant by a bioweapon, but that's why we love you Baba Vanga. We love vague mysticisms over here. Some sort of gas weapon or a virus? Now the United Nations of course bans the development and production of any biological weapons, but you know, if you think all the countries follow everything the United Nations does all the time, I've got a bridge I'd love to sell you. Anyway, if she was predicting accurately, this would have huge ramifications, not just for public safety, but also global politics. If it was a virus she's referring to, Vanga did make another prediction similarly in 2022 that a new virus would be uncovered and spread rapidly across the globe, as if we really need to do that one again. We just recently uncovered 33 new viruses in Siberia, and if you can wait just a couple minutes, you'll hear a lot more about that. Now, could there possibly be a connection between these retroviruses and her prediction of a bioweapon? I mean, of course there could be, but there could also not be. For all of our sakes, we sincerely hope maybe Baba Vanga was getting this one wrong. She's not right all the time. She predicted by 2017 that Europe would cease to exist, and as of this video, December 30th, 2022, Europe currently still exists. Could we get someone to check in on that just to make 100% sure? She also predicted that Barack Obama, the 44th president, would be the final president the United States ever saw. And unless she was making a complicated political commentary, there have been two more presidents since then, and there probably will be a few more afterwards. So she's not always right. But if you want a prediction that is right on the money 100% of the time, I predict that if you click through on Top 5 Scary, you're going to find a video you like, you'll subscribe, and you'll get fresh scary content every single day. And I've got a feeling that I'm right. I know that psychics are fake because one told me I'd find love. <laughs> Number four, yet another super virus. Athos Salome is a self-proclaimed parapsychologist and psychic who has been called the Nostradamus of Brazil. It seems like every country has one. And every year, he makes a point of releasing his predictions for the year ahead. Whether his predictions are simply guesses or if he really does have some kind of psychic gift is really not for me to say. But what I will say is that he has a relatively impressive track record. Salome was apparently able to predict a variety of things that happened in the last few years, such as the virus that has been taking the world by storm, the current situation in the Ukraine, the death of Queen Elizabeth II, and the results of the recent World Cup in Qatar. If this is true, and Athos really has been capable of predicting major world events, I really hope his predictions for the year ahead prove untrue. 
In his 2023 prediction report, he states that the world will have to deal with yet another bug that could cause serious harm to the population. As he puts it, it will sweep the world and the fight against this new virus will take longer than one can imagine. If this new virus goes unchecked, suffering, mental and material damage will proliferate death and this virus will be known as the greatest grim reaper in history. Athos claims that the origin of this sickness will be a result of melting ice in Antarctica. Whether his prediction for this year is true or not, this particular theory does have some scientific plausibility. Scientists have been saying for years that as the polar ice caps melt, viruses and bacteria that have been frozen in the ice for thousands of years could be released onto the world. We got a taste of this in 2016 when eight people in Siberia were infected with anthrax after an infected reindeer carcass that had been frozen in the permafrost was thawed out due to a heat wave. Scientists have studied ice samples taken from the Tibetan Plateau and apparently discovered 33 previously unknown viruses that have been frozen away for about 15,000 years. Hopefully, Athos is mistaken, and this won't be the year where a previously unknown virus thaws out from the ice and drives the world into pandemonium once again. Number three, a sh <laughs> Leave that in. Leave that in the video, please. <laughs> Number three, a shift in Earth's orbit. You know, there's a lot of really good things to like about the Earth. Lush fields, flowing water, the Fast and Furious franchise, and it orbits exactly where it should. It's a fantastic trait of our big blue marble. Well, Baba Vanga, always in my mind and always in my heart, made another worrying prediction about the state of the Earth in the near future where she predicted that somehow, some way, something is going to knock Earth off of its orbit. Now, I feel like I don't need to explain too much why something knocking Earth off of its orbit would be pretty bad. Mostly because I'm not a scientist, I don't really know the big details. Everything we're doing on this planet works the way it does, due in no small part to everything fitting in just the right place. But let's get into it for just a second. If Earth was somehow thrown off by its orbit by some incomprehensible cosmic galactus level force, it would wreak incalculable havoc. Countries would be thrown into cycles of month long days or nights, you know, which might sound nice at first, you know. Imagine you had the most beautiful day of the year lasting three months. Except then you think of the damage it would cause. Unending daylight would lead to mass sleep deprivation, global anxiety, and it's not to mention what it would do to our flora, fauna, and wildlife. Crops would be ravaged, burnt, leading to a global famine. As well, unending days would lead to temperatures doubling, melting the ice caps even worse than they already are, rising sea levels and flooding coastal cities. We're not even talking about the parts of the globe that would be sent into like a, a long, long night. Could you imagine a three month long night? For media starters, that would mean vampires and like Cats, I guess, would be the only ones thriving. Huge for the Fang community. Interestingly though, this actually is a recognized phenomenon called a polar night. And it's a town in Norway that actually experiences something like this in Tromso. The sun doesn't rise from November to January, and paradoxically, they don't seem to experience seasonal affective disorder at all, and seem pretty fine with it. So add Norwegians alongside vampires and cats as the folks who would be fine with this. Sadly, as I am not one of those three groups, I probably would have an issue with it. So I'm gonna hope, just for my own sake, that this is another prediction of Baba's that isn't quite on the money. Number two, solar storms. With all the rather dire predictions made by Baba Vanga for the upcoming year, it could be tempting to call her a pessimist. One of her more devastating predictions for the year ahead is that we will experience what is known as a solar storm. A solar storm refers to phenomena taking place on the surface of the sun, such as coronal mass ejections or solar flares. If one of these coronal mass ejections were to reach Earth, it would cause a geomagnetic storm. This kind of storm has happened before on Earth in 1859, in what has since been called the Carrington Event, due to the work of astronomer Richard Carrington. It resulted in telegraph networks being knocked out, as well as people using electronics being electrocuted, and even some pretty nasty fires. But it would be much worse if it happened today. Imagine if you will, a world where all of the technology you take for granted was suddenly fried and unusable. Suddenly, internet access and records would be lost. Communication systems that we have come to rely on keep our world running would become useless blocks of dead machinery. A world of darkness where chaos reigns and the financial markets are suddenly put into a dramatic tailspin that we could not even begin to reverse the effects of for years. Think of the chaos that took place relatively recently in Texas when the power grid went down, and imagine what would happen if that took place all over the world. Considering the disastrous global consequences of one of these severe solar storms, let us hope that Baba Vanga is incorrect in her prediction that this will happen in the upcoming year. 
I'm sick of hearing about Baba Vanga. I'd like to hear some somebody else prophesizing some doom day. Maybe uh, Nostradamus, he's a pretty good one. Nostradamus wrote hundreds upon hundreds of predictions and for years after the fact, scholars and experts have been trying their darndest to decipher what he meant by them. Because like all the great psychics of the world out there, he only wrote in vague mysticisms. So let's hear what Mr. Michel de Nostradamus had to say. Take a listen. The moon in full of night over the high mountain. The new sage with a lone brain sees it. By his disciples invited to be immortal. Eyes to the south. Hands in bosoms. Bodies in the fire. Now, I'm gonna be level with you. This does kind of sound like something a wizard in a cave in like one of the Zelda games would tell you, but let me do my best to parse this. Some Nostradamus experts and translators believe that this could be a reference to the rise of the digital age. I know, I know, but bear with me. The new sage with a lone brain sees it by his disciples invited to be immortal could possibly be referring to, and I don't want to stroke his ego too much here by calling him a sage, but Mark Zuckerberg's desire for the metaverse and his unwavering belief that that's the future of humanity, that we're all going to strap ourselves into a VR headset and start living our new lives inside a digital realm that looks like Wii Sports Resort, where we'll all begin anew and leave our fleshy bodies behind. Perhaps this is what Bodies in the Fire is referring to. Now this stuff all seems a little sci-fi still, but it's an interesting thing to ponder and think about as we're getting close to reality each day. Is this the end goal for humanity? To link us all up? To escape the weakness of our flesh and get plugged into the matrix, existing as bits and bytes forever? In the last few years, we've seen AI go from rudimentary chatbots to these impressive creation tools capable of generating things we wouldn't believe. Will we get to a point where an AI can mimic a human experience? Notable video game director Hideo Kojima firmly believes this, and in a December 2022 interview alluded to this saying that he believes he'll continue making video games even after his own death because he will have scanned his brain and an AI based off his thoughts and his works will continue on his legacy long after he's gone. A disciple invited to be immortal, and if there's any disciple, it's Hideo Kojima. Now, I don't know about you, but I kind of like this reality, and I hope we can stay in it just a little bit longer, but that's mostly because I'm bad with computers.